name is Cynthia von Bueller. In 1922, my grandfather was given a free trip to America because he was a brave soldier in Italy. He ran an ice delivery business in the Bronx and somebody owed him money. He needed the money because he had four children and his wife was pregnant. So he grabbed his coat and went out to collect the debt. He took his son Dominic with him. They unlocked the door and let him into the apartment. But before he could finish taking off his coat, he was shot. He couldn't even defend himself because his arms were stuck in his sleeves. He died. When Grandma found out, she fell down and went into a long sleep. As Grandpa's coffin was being carried into their apartment, a man who carried it tripped and fell and dropped the coffin right on the ground. My mother says that Grandpa's ghost tripped him the sound of the coffin hitting the floor woke Grandma up. Her baby started to come out. In the living room, my grandfather's body was laid out in his coffin, and in the bedroom next to it, my mother was born. Whenever I ask my mother about the murder, she always says the same thing. Brothers, my sister, and I, it was never mentioned. Murder, his death, was never mentioned. I do know that my grandfather owned two illegal speakeasies in the Bronx during Prohibition. One was a club, and the other was a bakery. My grandmother made bootleg alcohol for the speakeasies, and she carried a gun to protect herself. Was my grandfather in the Mafia? Let's ask my mother. No. He was not in the Mafia. No. I've uncovered possible connections to the infamous mobster Dutch Schultz the Gotti Crime Syndicate, and even former presidential candidate Thomas Dewey. Over the past year, I have been dusting off a complicated tale of bootlegging, mafia, infidelity, and murder. It's six gamblers to carry my coffee. Francis Glesner Lee established the Department of Legal Medicine at Harvard in 1936. At that time, many murders went undetected because evidence was mishandled or ignored. My grandfather's murder occurred in 1935, and I have uncovered evidence that his case was most likely mishandled. To train investigators of sudden or violent deaths and to better assess visual evidence, Lee created dioramas that students could examine from every angle. She called these sets the Nutshell Studies of Unexplained Death. Each one had authentic crime scene details. Lee's Nutshell Studies were used to challenge detectives and strengthen their ability to read evidence. Inspired by Lee's miniature crime dioramas, I have decided to create the scenes from my own family mystery using handmade sets and dolls. I have been making dollhouse sets for years. My children's books, But Who Will Bell the Cats and The Cat Who Wouldn't Come Inside, were both illustrated with sets I made by hand. I have spent two years doing research and creating these sets. Now I'm ready to make them into a book. My large art studio has been transformed into a historically accurate Prohibition-era New York City in 112 scale. The brick walls are sanded to look aged. I rub mud from our lake on the cars to make them look authentic. I have paid careful attention to the details from the time period. The speakeasy has doors with peepholes and secret passageways. My grandmother told me that they drank liquor out of espresso cups and they hid bootleg liquor in the speakeasy table legs. The bakery speakeasy was frequented by cops. To keep them happy, their cups were kept full. Grandma made the bootleg liquor in the bathtub of her small Bronx apartment. Her sons helped her even though it was a dangerous job. To tell my story with pictures, I created street scenes, apartment buildings, pre-war apartments, a hospital, a morgue, bathrooms, Ellis Island, my own childhood bedroom, and so much more. I used plaster and wood for the walls and streets. I scoured eBay and hardware stores for props and supplies. The light fixtures and candles are all real and can be lit. Hospital beds at gurneys can be cranked up and down. I have paid careful attention to every minute detail. This is the bathroom where Grandma made her bootleg liquor. The dolls have articulated limbs so they can be posed. They are on a one-inch scale, which is called 112, which is tiny and much smaller than Barbie-sized dolls. 
My grandma and grandpa dolls were personalized with clay over plastic doll forms. I had to bake them quickly in an oven. After they are hardened, I paint them with gouache and glue on tiny little wigs for their hair. I also glue hair on their bodies so they are authentic even under their clothing. Creating a whole miniature world in my studio and posing the dolls in possible scenarios has helped me uncover what may have happened to my grandfather way back when. But that isn't all. I'm going to put on a play. Another tune, another sunny. I have been creating interactive performances and installations in clubs, galleries, and museums for years. I also enjoy holding large, decadent parties in immersive environments. These parties always incorporate performance and art. Whether I'm covering every square inch of a Manhattan loft with tinfoil, a la Andy Warhol's factory, or I'm greeting my party guests as a mermaid in a bathtub filled with water, there's one thing for sure. You will be transported to a different world. One where anything can happen. With this play, I'm going to combine all of my skills, art, writing, performance, and installation into one elaborate project. The immersive environment I am creating will mimic the dollhouse sets from the book. Each guest will receive a secret password and a unique piece of evidence upon entering the speakeasy entrance. If you use the evidence wisely, you may be taken through secret passages to rooms where you will witness reenactments of key elements of the story. You are encouraged to be nosy, but it is required that you speak easy. If you happen to be in the right place at the right time, you might even witness the murder. We will all become witnesses.